So the other day I was down here working on a video and part of the video I was working on called for me to pull out a guitar that I hadn't seen or touched in a while. And it was this, a 2005 Taylor 110E. Now this was my first real guitar. I say first real guitar because technically it wasn't my first guitar. My first guitar was a $99 red Starcaster by Squire Strat. It was one of the Strats that came in a combo pack with a little 10 watt solid state amp I got for Christmas that year. But this was my first real guitar. For the better part of five years, this guitar and I were inseparable. I played it every single day. I would come home from school and the first thing I would do before homework or anything else is pull this guitar off the stand and start playing. I've got literally thousands of hours on this thing and a lot of what made me who I am as a player today, I learned on this guitar. The songs that I first learned, the first time learning solos and the major and minor pentatonic scales and how to finger pick and all of that was on this one guitar. And when I pulled it out of its case a few days ago for that video, I realized I have not played this guitar in over 10 years. At some point, I just sort of moved on. I put it in its case and moved on to new styles of playing, new guitars. I went to music school and this guitar just sat quietly in a closet for the better part of a decade, well, over a decade. So after I was done with that video the other day, I decided to leave this guitar out. I left it out on a stand here around the house and occasionally picking it up as I walk by and strumming it here and there. And I was reminded of the story of this guitar, seeing it, playing it, hearing it, smelling it brought me back to a really, really special and specific time in my life of when this guitar and I came together and uh, I want to make a video about it. Now this is a Taylor 110E. It's got a solid Sitka spruce top, laminated mahogany back and sides, a mahogany neck, and an ebony fretboard. Now I am going to shoot this out against my now number one acoustic, which is a bourgeois slope D dreadnought, which is about 10 times the price of this guitar. But the other day when I pulled this out and put new strings on it, I was struck by how good this thing sounds. It's pretty balanced, it's loud, but it sounds exactly how I remember hearing it all those years ago. I took it with me on camping trips, I would take it with me on vacation and every holiday visiting family across state lines. And when I graduated high school and went to college for only one year, this guitar went with me. And I played it every single day at college. The first time I ever performed in front of people. In fact, the first few years of performing in front of people, I was playing this guitar. In fact, I remember the day I brought this home vividly. I can remember almost every single thing about the day I bought this guitar. It's one of my most cherished memories and something I'll hold on to forever. And actually, let's go check out the store where I got it from. So this is the guitar center I came to with my mom and dad a little over 15 years ago when we picked up that Taylor. I'd been working all summer cutting lawns for my parents and for my neighbors, saving up money. And I had done my research and figured out that I wanted the 110 specifically, but I didn't have enough money for it. So I had settled on, I think it was an Epiphone because I only had about $350 saved up. And we came here we tried out a bunch of guitars, and after playing just about everything in the acoustic room that was in my budget, 
my dad surprised me by telling me that he would cover the difference to get the Taylor, which is the guitar that I really, really wanted. So I dropped all my hard earned money, just about every dollar I had to my name and my parents covered the difference and I walked out with that brand new Taylor 110. It's crazy being back here because the outside hasn't changed at all. In fact, they still have the same pictures on the front wall. So there's uh, John Mayer, Black Crows, Zach Wild. And also, fun fact, we're in Duluth, Georgia right now, uh, where apparently John Mayer used to have an apartment right here in this neighborhood, which is where he wrote a bunch of the first and second record, I think. I am driving up 85, 85's right here. By the way, we stayed in the car to observe social distancing <laughs> guidelines and because Guitar Center's closed, but you get it. Now eventually time moved on and I continued to grow as a musician. I went to music school and graduated, got out and started gigging and earning somewhat of a living from playing gigs. It wasn't much at first, but when I combined gigging and teaching together, I was able to basically earn enough to live on just from music. And eventually the time came for me to invest in a better acoustic instrument. So the next thing I bought was a Taylor 916. I borrowed the money from my parents, bought the guitar, and then over the course of the next five or six months paid them back. And that guitar never really worked for me. So I sold it and bought this. This is a Bourgeois Slope D. Now at the time I didn't realize it, but I ended up getting a screaming deal on this guitar. I bought it from a doctor up in Maine who is a collector of this particular brand, Bourgeois. And I took a risk. I bought it sight unseen off the internet, having never played it or really heard it, just seeing the pictures. But I knew it sort of fit the description of what I wanted, a slope shoulder dreadnought, Sitka spruce top, and a beautiful mahogany back and sides. It was basically a bigger, better, faster, stronger version of my 110. Now on the surface, these two guitars share a lot in common. They both have solid spruce tops. They're both a dreadnought shape, although the Bourgeois is a slope shoulder dreadnought like a Gibson J45, whereas the 110 is a little closer to a Martin D28 shape but they've also got mahogany back and sides. Yet this one is basically 10 times the cost of this one. So what are you getting for 10 times more money between this guitar and this guitar? Well, the first major difference is gonna be in the quality and construction of the woods, particularly in the back and sides. Now, the 110 has a laminate back and sides, which means it's not a solid piece of wood. It's several smaller pieces of wood that have been laminated and glued together to essentially simulate a solid piece of wood. Now companies do this to cut costs. It's way cheaper in materials and it's easier to do than working with solid wood. Also, as you can probably tell, there's a difference in the quality of these two woods. Although I must say the back of this 110, especially in the light here, looks pretty great. Then onto the top. Both of these guitars have solid tops, which is really what you want when you're looking at an acoustic guitar. Now on the Bourgeois, you can see this is a much nicer top. This is actually Bear Claw Sitka, and it gets the name Bear Claw because of those interesting striations that you see coming from the middle of the top there. There's also gonna be quite a big difference in construction. As you can probably tell on the inside of the 110, there's no bracing along the sides or the back of the guitar. Whereas on the Bourgeois, we have lots of scalloped bracing and that's all scalloped by hand. In fact, this entire guitar is built completely by hand, even down to the type of adhesive that they use to hold the guitars together. This is pretty much made of a standard wood glue, whereas the Bourgeois is a hide glue. So it's not vegan, but this is how great acoustic guitars of years past have always been constructed. So objectively, we can say that the Bourgeois is a nicer guitar, but does it sound 10 times better than the plucky old Taylor? Let's find out.
Okay, so after listening back a couple of times, there's definitely a difference between the 110 and the Slope D, although it's not nearly as big of a difference as I would have originally thought. To me, the 110 is a little thinner. There's more brightness, there's more top end, and part of that is because these are brand new strings, but the Slope D has brand new strings on it as well. I just strung both guitars up with a fresh set of the same D'Addario strings. But this guitar has much more of a mid-scooped sound. You're not getting as much of the low-end thump in mid-range as you are in the Bourgeois, and I think that primarily has to do with the laminate back and sides on this guitar. To me, the Bourgeois felt more full, it was more even and balanced across the whole frequency spectrum, and it was a little louder just sitting here playing it. The guitar resonated a little bit more. But does it sound 10 times better than this? Absolutely not. To me, this is highlighting actually how good this little Taylor really is. It punches way above its weight class, even with a guitar that's 10 times more expensive. Now I should point out, I didn't pay five grand for that bourgeois. Like I said earlier, I got quite a deal on it. So good, in fact, that the guy I bought it from on several occasions has emailed me asking to buy it back from me, uh, to which I've replied each time, no thanks. It actually makes me feel kind of proud of this little guy. It really holds its own against a much more expensive, much better guitar than this one. So that's the story of my first guitar. I'm going to keep this thing out of its case and not let it go another 10 years not being played and appreciated. What about your first guitar? Do you still have it? Do you play it? Maybe you're still on your first guitar. Let me know in the comments section down below. I love reading people's stories about their instruments because they are sort of part of us and every instrument has a story to be told which I think is really cool. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think. Be sure to check out my tone course, which is now available linked down below, as well as links to Kemper Profiles, Helix presets, and hopefully very soon my first IR pack will be available. So keep an eye out for that. Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to be notified when I'm posting new videos. Follow me on Instagram at Rhett Shawl. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And remember, there is no plan B.